Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. Today I wanted to talk about that very interesting FBI file that came out a few weeks ago. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it's actually available online, I guess. If you just go to Google and search Bigfoot FBI file released, you could probably find it. And uh, when you download it, it's like a 22-page document in Adobe. So I've kind of been going over it and trying to, I guess, piece together the story. Back in 1976, uh, Peter Byrne, who's a, a very well-known Bigfoot investigator and researcher. Um, if you're not familiar with Peter Byrne, I'd recommend going onto Amazon Prime and checking out the documentary called Sasquatch Odyssey, The Hunt for Bigfoot. He's in that documentary and uh, he, you know, he's a very, very interesting fellow from the UK. Um, who I, seems to have lived a pretty extraordinary life looking for Bigfoot and uh, has received lots of funding to try and accomplish that. Um, so I guess back in the day, back in the 70s, he had sent a hair sample to the FBI. Uh, it contained 15 actual strands of hair and they were attached to a piece of skin. Now, according to Peter Byrne, you know, him and his organization, the, the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition is what it was called. Um, they were pretty knowledgeable on hair samples, right? And he was actually working in association with the Academy of Applied Science in Boston, which is very interesting. Um, the hair sample was actually sent through the Academy and not from Peter Byrne himself. It uh, went through the Academy of Applied Science, which is kind of cool. Uh, but the hair sample was sent off to the FBI to be examined, and they actually accepted it. You know, they were interested in checking it out, which is very cool, which means, you know, they were... I guess they saw the possibility of the Sasquatch being, being a real thing, which is kind of cool. Um, and I guess, you know, they, they usually stick to doing forensic analysis on samples that are, you know, that, that have to do with crimes that are related to, you know, very serious matters involving crime and investigations. Um, but occasionally they'll accept samples like this um, if there's, you know, some pretty significant scientific implications. So, I don't know, I, I was kind of thinking to myself, if I was going to send hair samples somewhere, this would probably be the last place I would send them to. You know, like a government institution or, or whatever. Because who knows if you're going to get them back, and they could basically tell you anything after. It's not like they're obligated to tell you exactly what it is. You know, they, they probably didn't tell them the truth, but the long and short of it is is eventually, you know, after corresponding with them for so long, it, it ended up being, or, well, the FBI told him that uh, it was just deer hair, or from the deer family, basically. Um, and, you know, it says in these documents, uh, Peter Byrne kind of explains that they have, you know, looked at many different hair samples and are familiar with different hair samples, and that this one that they sent in was, you know, very unfamiliar to them. And I'm assuming Peter Byrne and the Academy of Applied Science would be able to figure out if it was deer hair on their own. And they wouldn't need, you know, uh, forensic analysis done by the FBI laboratories. Um, but of course, you know, they're going to tell him that it's deer or something else. If it was Bigfoot, which it might be, you know, they're not going to say that. So I don't know, like, if you have some sort of sample, a hair sample, or any sort of DNA sample, where are you going to send that to, you know? Who, who is there out there that you're going to trust? I don't know, even like a university or something like that, can you really trust them? I've heard stories of, of samples being sent to universities and they basically disappear, they're never seen from again. You know, it's really hard for, for people, especially amateur investigators, to submit any sort of potential evidence, like real evidence that might have DNA. I, for one, am, am lost as to, you know, what I would actually do if I had something like that. Um, that's why, I, myself, because I'm into video, I'm going to stick with the video evidence and photographic evidence. That's going to be my thing. Um, there's other people out there who can who can get DNA, but I'm looking to get Sasquatch caught on video. 
That's what I want. That's what I'm after. I want that visual sighting. I'm sure if I do find some sort of weird scat sample or hair sample and I send it away, I'm not going to see it again, you know, which is unfortunate. And I don't know, it seems to me like, well, this is back in the 70s, so maybe they weren't as suspicious of uh, government agencies, you know, suppressing information on these matters and, you know, the whole cover-up thing. Should probably do a video on the Bigfoot cover-up theory because, you know, there's lots of people out there who claim that the government's, you know, covering up Bigfoot and they know about it, and it's actually a very, very common theory, and I'm sure the majority of my subscribers, you know, are supportive of that. Um, not nearly as big of a government cover-up as the whole UFO thing, which, you know, pretty much everyone I know believes in UFOs now, which is kind of cool. But Bigfoot's the hard one, it's the tricky one, it's the one with lots of jokes tied to it, so, you know, a giant uh, bipedal monkey creature walking around, and it's been, you know, mocked and used in, in commercials for a long time, and TV shows, and I don't know. It's actually, it's very interesting though, I'd recommend going and checking out these documents and downloading them, and have a read, and you know, let me know what you guys think about it. I just think it's very cool and significant that the FBI would be, you know, willing to even accept that. I'm sure they actually tested it. What I'm not sure of is if they told the truth about what it actually was. You know, they were definitely interested and curious, so they accepted it. And I'm sure they they did some tests and I don't know. I don't think it was a deer. I just don't understand how Peter Byrne and his group could not know that it was from a deer if they were very familiar with different hair samples at least that they claim to be you know if it was just a simple deer that would that just seems weird and out of place i think it was definitely something else and there's one section in the documents um where it talks about the washington environmental atlas which i guess was published by the u.s army corps of engineers um and it talks about sasquatch in uh, in that book um, and there's one part where it says a sample of reputed Sasquatch hair was analyzed by the FBI and found to belong to no known animal. Um, and, you know, Peter Byrne inquired about that to the FBI and they said, you know, there was no previous records or there's, there's no information basically regarding them ever um, looking into the Bigfoot subject um, when it comes to like analyzing hair samples. Um, you know, prior to Peter Byrne sending in that hair. But, who knows, I'm sure they had been looking into it for a while, especially when you think about all, like, the the missing 411 cases, like the Dennis Martin case. Pretty sure the FBI was involved in that. So, you know, they definitely have interest in, in this topic, which is pretty crazy. But who knows what they know? Maybe they know it's real. And uh, they just, they didn't want to release the truth. And that's the thing, like like I said, they can basically say anything. They don't have to <laughs> tell you exactly what it is. They're not going to say it's a Bigfoot. Even if it is, they're going to they're gonna be pretty discreet and shady about it. You know, it was a weather balloon. It wasn't a UFO, it was a weather balloon. That's what I imagine is going on. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this story, about this document. I find it very interesting. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Lone Crow podcast, make your way over to that channel. Link is down below in the description. There's uh, probably four episodes out now, four or five episodes. Um, don't quote me on that. I think it's four. But check out that channel, subscribe, have a listen. I'm in one of the, I think the third episode. And uh, me and Doug are chatting about the Bigfoot topic. Um, <clears throat> also, if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon page. Link is down below if you want to make a donation. Uh, directly to the channel through the PayPal link. Just go on the main YouTube page and in the top right corner uh, There's a support the channel button. You can click there Anyways, thanks for watching this video guys. That's all I have for you today. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries